So Section 1557, in very basic terms, prohibits the discrimination on the basis of race, color, national origin, sex, age, or disability. And national origin is where the language component comes in. So because I was born in Angola or in Portugal, I speak another language. You cannot discriminate against me because I may not have the level of fluency in English that is required to understand my health care. So there's a lot of focus right now on Section 1557. We waited quite a while for the final ruling, and I'll go into the little bit of a background and the history about it. But what I want to make sure that people understand is that Section 1557 is one law that's based on numerous other laws that were, was built on Title VI of uh, the Civil Rights Act of 1964. There's Section 504 of the Rehab Act of 1973, the ADA Act, the Age Discrimination, I'm sorry, Age Discrimination Act of 1975, as well as the ADA uh, of 1990. All of those laws still remain in effect and have a considerable impact and people can be held accountable for it. And then you also have to be aware that you really need to know what the state-specific laws are. So, for instance, in uh, Massachusetts, there's a state-specific law on interpreter services. In Oregon, in Washington, numerous states have specific laws about language access or discrimination, whether it's LGBTQIA, which is also part of Section 1557, but we're not going to address that today, obviously. So it just is a lot of information, uh, and Section 1557 was added to the ACA, the Accountable Care Act, in 2010. In 2016, it was reenacted again by President Obama. In 2020, President Trump uh, pulled some of it back, and then it was just released in April of 2024 uh, by President Biden to go into effect on July 5th, so it's already in effect. It went into effect on July 5th of 2024. So it's 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 been a long, it's not like it ever went away. It just had like different renditions of it. This one is going to be here to stay from what I'm told and what I understand. And it really, in, in essence of what it relates to language access, it really requires it's a lot of new requirements. For instance, you have to designate a Section 1557 coordinator, and that coordinator has specific responsibilities, like uh, answering grievances, documenting grievances, training staff, uh, being the go-to person for the system or for the entity on anything to do with Section 1557 which means not just for interpreting or language access, for insurance, for billing, for LGBTQIA, it's, it's for everything that encompasses um, Section 1557. So imagine being the expert on everything. You just can't be. So this is one of the struggles that organizations are going to have and are having right now. The other thing is that they have to post notices of discrimination in prominent places. So, you know, um, I don't know if you've been to a hospital late, lately, Carrie, but it's almost like wallpaper on the hospital now. We've got so much signage, so many posted things, and most of them, unfortunately, while well-intended, are not in the right font size. You have to have it in a size 20 font. You're supposed to, by ADA standards, be able to read it from three feet away. And what we find is that we have a bunch of eight and a half uh, by 11s posted to the wall. I mean, you literally need a magnifying glass to go and, and read anything. Um, so it has to be very visible. It has to be at every point of entry. Um, also, you have to establish a bunch of new policies if you don't already have it. So you have to have written policies on language access, on non-discrimination, on um, grievances, on um, uh, auxiliary aids, which are... Uh, equipment that can help facilitate communication for patients who are disabled, whether it's a hearing amplifier, where it's an interpreter, for like an ASL interpreter, whether it's a TTY phone, whether it's a phone that has um, the ability to raise the volume. So there's a whole list of auxiliary aids, including things like um, magnification for 
patients who are low vision, the websites have to be appropriate so that screen readers can read them. It's really complex. Uh, and after you've got these policies in place, let's say you get the language access policy in place first, uh, the interpreter policy, you have 30 days to start training um, all of your employees, everyone. And that includes your administration. It includes the senior leadership. It includes every healthcare provider. It includes everyone, including legal counsel.